everyone and welcome to another sewing vlog. I'm Rebecca and I am here in the Woodland Park Rose Garden, I believe it's called, with my friends having a costume event. You might recognize some of them from a previous video and I will link their <laughs> socials down below. So uh, this is Sunday and we're... <laughs> You'll especially recognize this one from several previous videos. Uh, <laughs> and we are having a fun socially distanced event in the garden with little picnicking and um, she's still being a goofball behind me. <laughs> and so this is the beginnings of this vlog. We're doing an event on a Sunday, so this gets to be first. And I forgot my belt for my dress, so I'm a little bummed, but I'm wearing my new teens dress. And I have a matching antique parasol, which is really exciting. So anyway, let's get to some pictures and fun and shenanigans and all that. And I will see you soon. Emily and I arrived at this event about two hours late. So there wasn't much time for pictures, unfortunately. I did snap some shots of all of us in the gazebo here, all with our masks on, of course. And then a few of us took some socially distanced pictures afterwards, which follow here. So, thrift haul time. The first one is this dress that I'm wearing right now. This is an Ishakti dress. I added the belt, it actually ties in the back, but I feel like it's just too much print when it doesn't have anything to break it up. So anyway, I'm super, super happy with this find. I haven't gotten any Shakti dress in a while and I used to find them all the time in the thrift stores. So I was very, very thrilled to find this one and in a perfect fit as well. Though I must admit the polyester is a little warm for today, but I wanted to wear it for this video. Now I have been thrifting for years and years. I love thrifting because it costs way less money and it also helps the environment because instead of all of those people just like throwing away their clothes or them going to waste, you can find wonderful, wonderful pieces. And again, you're spending a lot less money. At this point, most of my wardrobe actually comes from the thrift store. I think that in the last three years I've bought less than 10 certainly pieces, maybe like eight pieces from stores that were not the thrift store and then other things I have made myself as well. But I like to go to the thrift store and I do it fairly often and it's fun and it really helps to sort of let me cultivate that not quite history bounding but vintage inspired wardrobe that I really really love and that I've really gravitated towards these last few years because that is my style it's it's almost like comfy vintage inspired I guess um, I wear a lot of sweaters blouses definitely all skirts I like I don't remember the last time that I put on pants but I think that it might have been when I went zip lining last September because that is hard to do in a skirt. Otherwise, I just wear skirts all the time. I even went to Mount Rainier a couple weeks ago and wore a skirt. <laughs> so you're here for the vintage style thrift haul though. So let's take a look at some of the pieces that I've gotten. I took two trips to the thrift store last week, which was a lot and I spent more than I should have. I think I spent close to $100 to be honest, but I also have not been buying very much lately anywhere, so I didn't feel that bad about it, and I got some really great pieces. Let's start with my sewing related pieces because this pertains to some of the upcoming projects that I mentioned. These are going to be skirts. So I found this super cute fabric. It's actually a tablecloth. It's actually an Easter tablecloth, but I just couldn't resist the bunnies. Look how cute that is. 
So I'm going to make myself a cute spring bunny skirt as we head into the end of summer and fall. I think this one might be the first skirt that I will make, which means I'll probably start it this weekend. And I'm very excited about it. It's 100% cotton, by the way, so it's going to be really comfy. And it's a slightly heavier cotton, which is awesome because the skirt's going to have really nice weight. And it's also, even though it's a white base, it's not going to need a lining, which is fun. So I'll probably do, I haven't figured out just how much will fit in this yet, but I'm probably going to do as close to a circle skirt as I can. It might wind up needing to be like a few panels and not quite a circle, but I think I'll be close. The next fabric that I got, I have to admit, when I brought it home, I started to get a little bit disappointed in it, but I think it'll still make a really cute skirt. And it is this plaid. Now, the reason that I'm disappointed in it, it's actually twofold. First, I ran it through the washing machine because even if it's wool, I don't care if it's kind of felted. So I ran it through the washing machine and pulled stuff out of that load and everything smelled like mothballs. So that was a great surprise. Um, and in fact, it, 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 it infected uh, one of the other blouses that I got and my face masks. So uh, many loads of laundry later and several internet searches, I found out that uh, first I tried washing it with vinegar, which did not work and then washing it again in detergent. And yeah, that didn't work. It still smelled like mothballs. And so then I found a YouTube video, which I, if I can refind, I'll link it down below. But that suggested soaking anything that was affected with the smell uh, for, she did it in a, in a top load washing machine. I actually did it in a large pot that I used for dyeing, but it was clean. And so I soaked it in a mixture of vinegar and baking soda, got a little volcano going, and also laundry detergent. And I used, I've mostly switched to a scent-free laundry detergent, but I still have some of my scented one, which I love so much, and they discontinued. And that was the Gain Apple Mango Tango. And so I used that with this too. So now the mothball smell is gone, and all of those pieces just smell like Apple Mango Tango, which is fantastic. The other reason that I'm a little bit disappointed in this is because I thought it was all wool when I bought it. It's a pretty scratchy, soft fabric, and it turns out, after I did a burn test, that I think there is very little wool in here. I think there's still a tiny bit, but I believe it is mostly like acrylic or something. Maybe not acrylic. Acrylic is soft. I don't know. The burn test, like, I know it's it's a dead dino. Whatever it is that's in it, it's dead dino, um, mostly. So, yeah, that was a little disappointed. It flared up super fast, and, like, I thought it was going to burn the whole little piece, and then it turned into a hard bead, so. But, again, I think it'll still make a cute skirt for fall. And one can never have enough plaid skirts. The next most costume related item that I got is this lovely hat box. So it's not the biggest hat box, but it's actually quite tall. In fact, I haven't even tested it to see if it will fit in my hat box shelf that goes around my room. It's kind of a moot point anyway, because to be honest, my hat box shelf is full. So I'm starting to have to put hat boxes in my garage closet that I built that has some shelves out there. So luckily I also now have like two and two, two and a half empty hat boxes, which means I can make more hats. So this one is just a modern day shirt. This is the closest thing that I get to like a t-shirt. So meh, that one's kind of boring. This one is, I love this shirt. It's a stripe with a great statement flutter sleeve. And it's actually Project Runway brand, and I've already worn it once, which is why it's super wrinkled, because I pulled it out of the laundry. But I love it. It's just so, so cute, paired with, like, I've got a slate blue-gray skirt, circle skirt, and a red belt. It's like, I was going to film wearing this outfit on Tuesday, and that's when my closet collapsed. So that's why I didn't film this haul then. This one is a questionable color for me because you can see I just don't wear this color a lot. But that means that A, I don't have this in my wardrobe, and B, this is so 50s style with the rib knit 
and the high mock turtle and then the, the short sleeve. It's so 50 style. So I'm really excited to incorporate this into Next up we have one that I actually wore in the last vlog, I think, which I'm totally in love with. And it is just this red short sleeve sweater. It's got a lovely weave. I really, really like it. It just makes it so pretty. Honestly, I think it's like a Walmart brand. White Stag? I don't even remember, but it, that sounds familiar and I think that's Walmart. But it was like $3, so I don't really care. And it's super soft because I think it's like 100% acrylic. Yeah, it's totally 100% acrylic. But it's got such a cute vintage style, so I'm really, really happy with that one. And it's a great color. Speaking of great colors and acrylic sweaters, I at the same time picked up this red sweater. Don't you just love this tie neck? It's very, very vintage style, and it's got kind of a low sleeve, a low slopey sleeve too. It's not a dolman, but it's almost a dolman sleeve shape, so that is very 50s, and I'm very excited to wear this one. I think it's going to be just super cute to wear, but with the three-quarter sleeve, I'm going to have to wait till the weather cools down a little bit more to be able to wear this one. In kind of a similar vein of those, I have this really cute black sweater. I'll show you the knit on that one. And this one has these adorable tie sleeves, which I don't think is anything that is from any vintage style, but I thought it was really cute. The sleeves are also a little puffed. I don't know how well that's going to show but it's a puffed sleeve. So I just love that. I don't know, I love a puffed sleeve. And uh, this, it's very soft again, I think. Again, it's 100% acrylic, so. And I mean, I know they're dead dinos, but I think they're still soft and fun. And then this one I paid a bit much for, and then it was the victim, semi-victim, of the mothballing along with that fabric. I haven't ironed the collar since then, and I need to. Look how cute that is. This was actually brand new with tags on. It was originally from Kohl's and it was marked for $50. And although I did spend more than I normally would on a blouse or sweater, I got this for $10.99, 11 something. So not too bad. Still a lot less than I would get it from the store, obviously, like a new store. And again, new with tags. I don't like this whole peplum look on here, but I tuck all of my blouses into skirts, so it really doesn't matter. This is just going to be below the waistband of the skirt, and it's super cute. I mean, look at that collar. It's just adorable, So, and it's a sweater again also, so I'm very excited to wear that one. And lastly, I feel like I got more pieces than this, and I can't remember what I'm leaving out. I did also get a sun hat that's in the back of the car, but I've needed a sun hat and it was just a cute style sun hat because I burn if I think about the sun. <laughs> anyway, so I can't remember what else I might have gotten because I feel like I'm missing at least one piece, but I got this blouse, which that neckline just spoke to me. Love ruffled necklines. And it is actually too large. Uh, it's a size 1820 from Avenue, and normally I think I'm more of a 1416 from Avenue. But I'm just going to go ahead and take in the sides, and I can just do that, like, probably with my serger. Yeah, it's already serged, so I'm just going to do that with my serger, take in a couple inches off the sides, and this will be really, really cute. And it will help to kind of fill the void of a shirt that I have that is starting to die. Uh, I've had it forever and ever, and it's got like a tie front neckline and then ruffles so it looks kind of like this and is also an off-white and this is it's a little bit more off-white than this but I've loved that shirt forever and now I have to like wear it sparingly so that I'm gentle on it <laughs> I have a few pieces in my wardrobe like that so this will help take some of the ease I think off of that shirt and I'm a sucker for like a chiffon type floaty shirt anyway. So that is all of my thrift haul, at least all that I can remember. I know you didn't get a good like full length of this dress and my room isn't really large enough that I can do that. I can try and go in tiptoe, but, uh, but I do really like the dress. I think it's fun and breezy and I love Eshakti. I used to go to the thrift store specifically with Eshakti in mind and honestly I still do. <laughs> Time to work on some projects. First up, 
the bunny skirt with the bunny tablecloth that I got from the thrift store. I freehand patterned this, meaning I kind of made it up as I went along. More on that shortly. So this is my main pattern piece. It's too big for my table here, but you can see how it's not like a full half circle piece, but it is quite a bit of an A-line, pretty extreme A-line. That said, it was still just not really enough with currently this waist is really like the size of my waist. And so what I've done is I have also cut out two godets for each side of the skirt. These are at a diagonal. <laughs> and that should give me just that little bit of extra room. I was wearing a dress yesterday that basically by adding about, what is this, like four and a half or so inches around the hip on each side, it would equal the dress I was wearing yesterday. And so I think that that's really going to help with the hip flare as well as the flare at the bottom of the skirt. I did also cut out my pockets. And I have some pocket patterns, but I kind of just do them freehand because my patterns are a little bit small for pockets. And I like to make sure that it will very comfortably fit my phone. So those are my pockets. Okay, I'm gonna sew everything together now. Well, the body of the skirt and everything is all assembled. It just needs waistband and a hem and a zipper. And that is where we run into the issue because I set in this zipper, which I know is way too long, but I set it in and then proceeded to go to zip it up. And you might notice that there is a problem with this zipper. It was doing that all over the place. Like literally the entire top part of the zipper was all separating. Um, when I was trying to zip it up. So it's definitely broken and I'm like torn because it's again super super long zipper. I only need like this much. So part of me is like well if I just move down to the bottom put a little like dab of glue at the top to stop the zipper pull from riding off and use that then I could keep working on this tonight and like finish the skirt tonight which would be really awesome. But the other part of me is like, uh, if the top of the zipper is doing that, then the bottom of the zipper might do the same thing eventually, slash as soon as I try to zip it up. And it would be better to just go to Joanne's tomorrow, get a new zipper, and put in that zipper tomorrow. But I want to finish this skirt, so I think I'm going to go have some dinner and think about it. And then decide if it is worth just using the bottom of the zipper or if I should just scrap it for tonight, work on Elsa rhinestones or something, and then do this tomorrow. But I just had kind of wanted to do like a skirt a day or something and obviously that can't happen if I can't finish this skirt now. So this might not be a three skirt vlog. We'll see. It is the end of the night and but it's still Wednesday and I have a finished skirt yay it's a little later than I want to do it bed but only by like an hour so I will be okay at work tomorrow so I thought I would just hop on here and show you the skirt you'll have to excuse the fact that I'm sharing a mirror with Elsa right now who <laughs> is standing directly in front of the mirror but this is the cute skirt. So it's got a lot of nice flair. I can't pick up both because I'm holding this camera, but you can kind of see how it is. I really need to fix this mirror situation. And it probably has a lot of nice spin, but if I spin around, you guys are gonna get nauseous, so can't do that. And it's covered in bunnies, which is the best part. And I love the, the like heft of this fabric. I am wearing a little petticoat right now, which is kind of just my mm, one step 
more than everyday petticoat. So it's my like every other day petticoat. <laughs> Literally, I wear it all the time, which is a vintage Malcolm Oates petticoat. And uh, it's really helping to give a really great shape with this skirt. So I did do some weird things, which is like I gathered it, but only a tiny bit in the front, which I'm not sure that I love. And um, I gathered it more in the back. And I literally just did that completely eyeballed because I realized that uh, I couldn't really tell what part goes with what on the waistband because of the weird gorse in the side so it just didn't really make sense there but anyway I'm super happy with it I think it's freaking adorable and I'm gonna wear it tomorrow because why not so yay new skirt I forgot to say with this skirt I did actually obviously since it's Wednesday I did wind up using the bottom of that zipper to use as my zipper so Fingers crossed that it doesn't just give out on me at any time, but it seems like it's working fine, so hopefully that's true. Anyway, it's past my bedtime, so I gotta go to sleep and wear this skirt tomorrow. See you tomorrow. I'm starting on skirt number two this evening, and I'm doing an experiment first. I've decided that I'm going to pleat this up because I'm not sure how much width I need and how much flare I want this to have. So I'm just going to pleat them up how I want them and then kind of hold it up and see how that's going to go. I have enough for sure that I can do two panels lengthwise, but I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to need a third or not. So that is my current experiment. So I'm doing this plaid skirt really backwards from how I would normally do a skirt, which normally I would cut out the skirt panels, serge it, like search the edges, assemble them, do pockets zipper as I assemble them, and then pleat them or gather or whatever to the waistband. And this one is kind of a little bit opposite. I pleated up the fabric, which you saw in that last little clip, before I had cut out the fabric. I had already cut the waistband because I wanted that just out of the way because I knew I would need it separate, but I hadn't cut out any of the fabric. It was literally one long panel, about uh, just shy of two yards, I believe, long, once I cut the waistband off. And so I pleated up the top, then I found the center of the pleats, folded them over, cut off just a little bit of excess that was there at the waist, tapering it out uh, to the hem. And we're talking literally like a two inch, maybe, not even, difference from waist to hem. So it's very, um, barely flared at all but then uh, what I did was I basted down all of the pleats on the machine now what I'm going to do is I'm going to serge everything I still have to cut out the pockets so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to serge everything and cut out the pockets so I can serge it and then do the side seams while putting in the pockets and zipper and then put the waistband on so it's a little bit backwards. I'm still finishing with the hem. Um, it's definitely weird to do the pleating first, but I do think that it came out very nice. This is what it is looking like right now. So I'm really appreciating the pleating. I didn't press the pleats all the way down to the hem, and I don't know if I will later. I always feel like those pleats that are at the hem, they just kind of fall out anyway. So it's almost kind of like, what's the point? So I pressed it about just shy of halfway down. And this skirt is, I think, 34 inches, including the seam allowance and the hem allowance. So it will wind up just shorter than that, but it's like low calf. And that's because it's really a winter skirt to me. So I wanted it to be a little bit longer than what I would normally go for, which I would say in general is like about a 30, I think yesterday's was a 30 and a half inch long skirt, which by the way, not that you can see it, but I'm wearing yesterday's skirt. So I was feeling very cottage core today as I picked blackberries in this outfit, uh, but it was very fun to wear the skirt and I got a compliment when I went to Joanne. So, you know, always nice, I guess. <laughs> I got to say, oh, thanks. I made it yesterday. <laughs> And now we'll see if I can finish this tonight, even though I should be rhinestoning. That said, I am not wearing this tomorrow because it's going to be really too warm. So this is going to wait to be worn until it gets cooler and I can wear it with tights also because this fabric is like itchy as anything. And I'm still worried that the mothball smell is kind of there as well. 
um, hidden underneath the game laundry detergent, but we shall see. At the very least, it should be an easy project, so if it sucks, then it sucks. So I was cutting out the pockets and all of a sudden I just hit like an energy wall. So I'm not gonna finish this skirt tonight. I think I need to go sit and chill and probably then go to bed or something. It's only 10.20 and it's a Thursday, which is my Friday. So this feels really silly to do because usually I'm up until like one in the morning sewing on a Thursday, but uh, I guess I don't have the energy for that tonight. I doubt that I will come back to the sewing room tonight. There's always a chance, but I think I am going to go crash with like a popsicle or something like that in the other room. It's also really warm in here, so that doesn't help. So yeah, everything is cut out. The waistband is already, has the interfacing fused on it. Everything just needs to be surged and assembled, but that's not gonna happen tonight. And because that's not happening tonight, I am probably not finishing three skirts this week because it's Thursday night. I just have Friday and Saturday left and I'm debating about actually cutting this vlog on um, before Saturday because I'm supposed to have a small costume event going on on Saturday that's gonna be like three of us and you already have costume event photos in this vlog so might as well spread the love and move those to the next vlog instead. Um, so I will probably do at least some sewing tomorrow. I have a feeling I'll finish this skirt but I also need to film this Friday's video tomorrow which is getting dressed in my 19 teens dress and that involves a fair amount of setup and also energy just to get dressed up for no apparent reason other than you guys which is obviously a good reason but it's not like going to an event and leaving my house and all that so that will take up a significant portion of the day and i also have a family thing going on tomorrow as well so i don't know how much really i'll get finished but again i do hope to at least make this the week of two skirts just maybe not three so i will see you tomorrow so i did a stupid thing again because here I am just going through and working on the assembly of this plaid skirt and I sew up one side seam and and have already put the pockets in and then realize I didn't put the zipper in again so now I have to unpick one of the pocket seams just where it's attached to the skirt and put in a zipper there and remind myself how that works because I have done the whole pocket in the zipper thing before but it's been a little while so I gotta go do some internet research and then put my zipper in and then finish the skirt. So I kept working on the skirt yesterday Friday night long after I should have gone to bed and it is now done. I didn't finish it all yesterday I did leave myself half the hem which I decided to do a hand hem instead of machine and also I left myself the hooks and bars um, for today. So I just finished those up today, Saturday. And now though, it's complete and it's super, super cute. And I cannot wait for cooler weather to pull this out and wear it. So that is it for me for the vlog this week. I did do some other super fun stuff today, Saturday, but since it was a costume event and you already got a little bit of a costume event in this vlog, that is going to wait for next week's vlog because otherwise I'm also worried that I'm going to spend all of next week editing videos and there might not be any other sewing content besides a super super fun event that we had today. So come back next week if you like events but maybe not much sewing. But if you did like this video please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon and if you'd like to see more videos like this from me please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my vlogs on Tuesday and my regular content coming out on Fridays but I post every Every day over on Instagram so please go follow me on Instagram that's at Lady Rebecca Fashions and if you'd like to give a little bit of monetary support to this channel with all of the work that I do I do have links to my Kofi or coffee down below once again thank you so much for joining me this week I do hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you very soon in my next video happy sewing <laughs>